Hello and welcome to this video where I'll be going over my private events application. So this is an application I built in Ruby on Rails and it's fairly straightforward but what I was trying to do here is build something that mirrors the basic functionality of a site like Eventbrite so people can visit the site, sign up to create an account, uh, they can create events and perform CRUD actions on those events so create, read, update and destroy those events uh, and other people can see the events, but you can make an event private or open. If it's private, then you need an invite to, uh, to attend. And event creators can send invites to any user on the site to both private and open events. So I'm just going to show you what it looks like uh, here and give you a quick run through. So this is the main uh, root page where you will land. And at this moment in time, I'm not signed in. So what you do see is upcoming events, which are all the events with a time. So there's time constraints to, to put all the events in the future in this upcoming panel. And then all the events of the past go in this past panel. And here are just all the events that have been created in this application. And if you're not signed in, you get to see this each, each pane and you get to view each event. Uh, and if there are attendees at the event, then you'll be able to see those. So maybe we'll find one here with some attendees. Right here we have some attendees and some basic information. And that's about all you can do uh, if you are not signed in. If you want to sign up, you can. So let's just make a... Uh, okay, so we'll sign up here. Okay, now that we are signed up, sorry, now that we are signed up, we have a flash alert here to let you know that you've signed in and signed up successfully. And now you get to see a little bit more functionality. So instead of just a view, you also get to uh, attend. There's a, a button to attend each of these events. However, you've got to note that if it's invite only, this attend button does not show up. So if you're interested in an event, you can view it. And there's also the attend button there. So let's attend this event. Okay, and we get a flash alert that tells us that we are attending the event and we get redirected to the My Events link up here, which is this link. And what this does is it's, it, it categorizes all of the events that you are involved in. So there's the events that you create will show up on the left, the upcoming events that you're attending show up in the middle, and the past events that you attended will show up on the right. And let me show you what that look, looks like. So let's find a past event. <coughs> Oh, that was invite only. Okay, we have a past event here where we can attend. So that, you know, obviously in retrospect, it wouldn't make sense to attend a past event, but let's say that you, you did attend, then that shows up here in the past. And if you want to create an event, you just go up to the top, create event, and we uh, call it test event. Uh, here and let's uh, let's say it's going to be in August on the 7th and uh, let's make it at uh, 11 a.m. Okay, this is a test event and there is a validation on this event description. It has to be at least 10 characters. Uh, let's keep it open so anyone can attend. It's not going to be private and we'll create that event. Okay, and once we create the event, it takes us to that event show page and we get uh, options to edit and delete, so we can edit this. Uh, so we'll say, let's make this longer. Get to update the event. Okay, and then that gets updated here. And we can also delete the event if we want to. Okay, so that event has been deleted and you get sent back to the root page. But uh, let's recreate that event. Okay, so I just recreated a, an event very quickly for the uh, purpose of this demonstration. And we get the flash event was successfully created. So we've tested edit, we've tested delete. And the next thing we can do is send invites. So what this does is this shows all of the uh, users that are registered with on this in this application. They show up here, except for uh, the user that's currently logged in does not show down here because obviously it wouldn't make sense to send yourself an invite. And once you send an invite, 
uh, it has to the page has to refresh so each click is is a page new page load uh, and once you send an invite you get the option to rescind that invite and a status field will show up here to let you know what's happening invite pending you rescind and the invite button comes back and if somebody is attending this event it will actually show them as uh, attending and these buttons will not show and then if we look in the my events page you can see here that the event that we just created now shows up in the my events list now we have an event in each category so my events upcoming events and past events all showing in the dashboard so what I'm going to do next is log out and sign in with another account which did receive an invite from this account to that event that we just created and you'll see how that invite shows up in the invite pane and I'll also show you what the invites panel looks like as well if somebody is already attending event so we're going to log out and we'll log in with a different username Okay, so we've just logged in with a different user account now, and it's going to show you, uh, for example, this user is already attending this public speaking at Ruby event, which is an open event. And once you're already attending an event, a withdraw button replaces the attend button. Uh, and the same for private events as well. You can withdraw from those, though you can only access those or, or attend those through an invite. And then any event that you've created yourself will show up as uh, with a blue uh, header in this root page. Okay, so in order to look at your invites, you go to My Events. And this is what the Invites panel looks like. So uh, in the Ruby code here, it is looking to see if there is an invite that exists in an Invites table. And if it does, it shows it in this, this pane. And so what we can do, these are private events, I believe. Um, yeah, this is a, an invite only. So we get to view the event and we get to see who's attending already. And if we want to attend it, then we hit attend. We get a flash that we are attending this event and that button disappears. So we can view here. Now we have the withdraw button on that event and it shows us as attending. Uh, now, in order to clear this invite and get rid of it here, you actually have to hit this button, clear invite. And again, the same here, we have another invitation to test event, we can view it. So this one's open to anyone. Uh, we can attend this now and clear the invite. And you can see that these events now show up down in the upcoming events panel. And within this, uh, within this user panel, we can remove past events. We can withdraw from uh, upcoming events. We can also view those events and then any events that we created we can view edit or cancel the event and the last thing i wanted to show is the invites panel so right now we're back in our events dashboard my events and i want to view this this event here and if i look down in the invites panel i can see uh here so i wanted to show you so if if there is a status user attending then the invite button disappears obviously because you don't want to be sending an invite to somebody who's already attending an event and then we have the invite button for someone who isn't attending and a rescind button for someone who has been invited and has a pending invite and this user attending status mirrors what's uh, also showed up in the attendees box up here and if you want to know what the database schema looks like here it is so we have four tables a users table events table attendings table and invites so the users is for every unique user on the site and is also used by the device authentication gem in Ruby on Rails. And we have an events table to track each unique event and its uh, description, name, location, etc. Then we have an attendings table. And what this does, this is a through table that allows users to have many events and events to have many users attending. And what this is doing is just capturing the attendance of each user at each event. And then we have an invites table which captures the invites being sent from one user to another for a given event. And if you wanted to look at the associations for this, this is what they look like. I'm not going to go through these in detail here, 
But uh, if you do have any questions or comments, leave them below or I'd be happy to answer them.